Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar using Finestra Pro Premium to optimize the facade design and its energy performance based on early stage design considerations. I can't believe I got through that. Uh, my name is Alyssa Chartier, and I'm pleased to be your moderator today. Before we get started, make sure to click those widgets below. We do have a testing widget in case you are looking to get an AIA credit today. Make sure to fill out the poll questions as I put them out because they are requirement according to AIA as well, but check out below for your certificate at the end as well as the test after the webinar. Be sure to visit our website, ASTI.com, to see how to achieve your design and business objectives through our innovative solutions, training opportunities, and services. We do have an event not next week, but the week after. It is the final installment of AEC Game Changers, an online forum where we are going to talk about iterative design. And I have linked that down below in the resource widget. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Simon, who's gonna share his screen. Simon, how are you doing today? Good, Alyssa, thanks, how are you doing? Doing great. If you want to go ahead and share your screen, we'll get started. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having us. Um, sorry, I'll just kind of start this. Uh, thanks for having me. I um, really appreciate it. Um, uh, it's great to chat to you guys and, and it's great to have the opp opportunity to share some of the stuff we're doing with Finestra Pro, but also, you know, alongside Skidmore Owens and Merrill and, uh, um, you know, looking at the facade and the envelope and very much around some of the, you know, the energy performance considerations of the facade and the envelope and how to optimize and, uh, you, you know, design with performance in mind um, and, the, you know, the kind of effects that these can have on the energy performance of the building. Um, as you said, Alyssa, um, I'm Simon uh, Whelan. I'm one of the founders of Finestra Pro. Um, I'm an architect originally, um, you know, uh, myself and my co-founder of Finestra Pro, we had a, an architectural firm here in Dublin, Ireland, where we're based. Um, a lot of it was spent in, you know, architectural technology and building performance. I have, an, I have a master's in environmental design. Um, I was a lecturer in environmental design and building technology. And, you know, and I suppose that and, uh, you know, my, my colleagues, background and specialism is in facade design and that was the genesis of Finestra Pro as a, as a, as a, as a company, as a, a product set. Um, I'm joined today by Ruben Cabanillas Ramos from Skidmore Owens and Merrill in New York. Uh, hello Ruben, are you there? Hey everyone, yeah, hello. Thank you so much for, for this invite, yeah. So um, I really appreciated the time in that we have been spending time uh, tools like that um yeah that that's to kind of give me a little background i am a um architect with a, a sustainable background specializing to uh in cluster systems i've um, been into uh, SOM skidmore for um more than three years uh work with challenging projects so that's kind of very fit into these conversations i'm originally Thanks. from spain so yeah, yeah, I think it's like a, a, a great year. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ruben. Um, yeah, and can I just say, we, we've been working with Ruben for a year or more, um, you know, uh, um, in Skidmore Owns' use of the tools, and they have been really good collaborators, really good partners, um, and uh, it's it's great to have Ruben here today. Um, Ruben's going to come back in a little later. I'm going to talk a little uh, more generally, first of all. About, first of all, typical building energy use, just very high level, looking at a kind of typical building and the different uh, uh, different um, energy uses um, from a, a typical commercial or office building, and particularly around the impact of, that the facade can have on that building energy use. We're going to talk about the passive considerations of the facade and how we see them in Finestra Pro and how Finestra Pro deals with them, I suppose. I'm going to just talk, uh, you know, about an overview of Finestra Pro and how it can look at some of the passive considerations, uh, both through the geometry and through the materiality of the facade um, 
from an early stage right throughout the process and optimize and really kind of key, uh, keep some of those passive considerations and performance design uh, parameters um, uh, as you know to the forefront of your design process. Um, I'm going to jump into Revit and you know uh, look at a couple of models with regards to their envelope, both a conceptual mass and a more detailed model. And then Ruben's going to come back and talk about um, particularly his experiences in Skidmore, Owens and Merrill, um, the inputs and outputs as they see it with regards to envelope design. And remember, you know, a, a, a really prestigious envelope uh, enclosures company um, and, you know, th their use of Finestra Pro and, and the benefits to the workflow as Ruben sees it. Uh, might have time for some Q&A and, and, and stuff like that. And, um, and I think there's a, a couple of uh, poll questions littered in there as well. Um, I suppose, you know, to, to talk about our background or, you know, uh, you know, we're coming from this, uh, where, where we're coming from, um, you know, a number of years ago, I, I suppose we very much recognized the requirement for a tool for architects and, and designers, particularly to design energy efficient facades and energy, energy efficient buildings effectively that could achieve the kind of performances that we wanted to achieve without compromising the aesthetic design of the facade or of the envelope. And, you know, what we wanted to do at Finestra Pro was give designers an uh, understanding of the implications of their design decisions from an early point in the process and really just allow them to design better buildings. So, you know, design buildings, you know, with beautiful facades and beautiful um, uh, elevations, but we're all the time with performance in mind. If we take, as I said, a, a typical office building or a typical um, you know, commercial building, the passive considerations of the facade can influence more than half of that building energy use. So if we take really big kind of energy um, uh, you know, impacts like heat loss, for example, through the slab, the floor slab, through the walls and, and, and glazing and through the roof, um, you know, we're looking at about 12% of, of the building's energy to account for that. If we take things like, you know, cooling um, or sorry, um, artificial lighting or, you know, in, in other words, the lack of natural daylight, we're, you know, looking at quite a lot, or maybe up to 19, 20 percent. And then things like heating and cooling loads to account for solar heat gains or or the opposite side, not maximizing your solar heat gains, we're up to like 20, 25 percent. So. All of those things, as I said, it's it's a tricky one, obviously, to quantify. Um, you know, uh, every building is different, every typology is different, and every building use is different. But typically speaking, more than half of that energy use of that building can be very directly influenced by your envelope. And at Finestra Pro, and you know, our, our tool set, we very much look at the thermal, you know, the heat loss um, aspects of of the envelope, the solar heat gains, or the you know, the penetration of Heat, heat, heat gains through the glazing and the daylight performance. And, you know, these are three considerations, as, as a lot of designers will know, that can very often work against each other. The more glazing I have, the better my daylighting, but the poorer the thermal performance of my envelope. You know, the less glazing I have, uh, the, you know, the, the, the less solar heat gains I have to manage, but again, the poorer my daylighting. So it's that sweet spot in the middle of, of those three considerations that we try and um, you know give the designer an understanding of. And how do we balance, how do we optimize between those three considerations? Well, we do it in a couple of ways. So through facade geometry, how much glazing is the optimal amount of glass to use, both in, for the entire building, but then also by orientation. So we might have a total wall to window ratio that we need to achieve defined by code or defined by the, the, the typology of the building. The facade materiality, what type of glazing are we using? What type of bit wall buildups? So what are the thermal performances? And then what are the, you know, those coefficients of the glass allowing heat gains in, allowing natural daylight in? And how can we, again, optimize that selection? And all the while, code compliance is really driving a lot of this, you know. Um, Obviously, it's a design limitation that we all have to, uh, you know, live with, I suppose. And, you know, being able to um, design or deliver the, you know, and execute the, 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 the aesthetic design or the performance that we're, we're designed that we're trying to achieve on our buildings is very much driven by always achieving code compliance. 
So quick question, and Alyssa, you can go ahead and uh, put up a poll there. I, th I think you have, but like, first of all, what ratio of the building energy use can be typically influenced by the facade? We talked about some of those. Sorry, Alyssa, go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. I just put it to the audience. Keep talking. All right, cool. So we said, you know, what, you know, we, we looked at a couple of the different energy uses of the building and we talked about what kind of um, ratio or what kind of percentage of the building's energy use is influenced by the facade, by those passive considerations. And then again, we talked about two very broad design parameters uh, used to optimize the facade. Code compliance is always going to drive it, but, you know, we, 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 we can look at like, you know, these broad kind of uh, things that Finestra Pro are, um, are, are driving towards. All right there, Alyssa, is that enough time for people to... Um, to uh... I'm, I'm going to leave it open for a few more seconds. If you don't see it, it should be in the slide widget and just click that and it'll maximize. Again, this is required uh, by AIA to receive the credit, the credit, so make sure you submit there. I'm going to leave it open for a couple more seconds and then we will go ahead and push this out. All right, here we go. Okay, it looks like the answer is over 50%. Interesting, and Simon, back to you. Thanks, Alyssa. Um, so, you know, just to go back to, uh, you know, we talked about different design stages and what kind of, um, I suppose, uh, activities our designers um, um, looking at at different at different stage, at different stages. Uh, you could take this kind of very an approach that you know very early stage, very loose design decisions, and then as we get closer and closer to the finished. Um, you know, product things are getting tighter and tighter. And I suppose Finesta Pro tries to reflect that, you know. So at very early stage and, con and conceptual and schematic, we're certainly looking at things like understanding orientation and what those climatic conditions might be with regards to different solar loads. The effects of surrounding buildings and, sur and, and shading on the building, on our on our building itself is, is uh is huge, you know, because we might have a south-facing facade that has 80% glass that you would think is going to, um, you know, cook in the in the summer, uh, but there might be a building across the street that's 30 stories high that, you know, we we don't we don't get any solar heat gains, you know. So those kind of considerations are key. And then we, as we move into schematic, we're starting to look at things in more detail. So, you know, certainly in internal performances around daylight performance and solar heat gains and looking at the thermal performance of different elements of your building, your walls, your 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 glazing, your roofs and floors, at, you know, in really simple terms. Um, but we might start looking at outline code compliance and, and, you know, what will that mean on the wall to window ratio of the building? And, you know, what, what how's that going to drive my aesthetic design? Uh, likewise, you know, with shading, what kind of shading devices may I use? What kind of impacts are they going to have on my heat gains, thereby reducing my cooling loads? But, they're, but they may also kill your natural daylighting. So, you know, those kind of sacrifices that you may make on one side m might actually work on the other, you know. Um, and then as we move into DD and, you know, the more detailed aspects, uh, we can start looking at fenestration and detailed facade geometry, um, glazing spec, from, from really early stage right through, you know, um, and again, all of these things, what what impacts are they having on heat gain, on daylighting, on thermal performance? And, you know, actually one thing that we haven't touched on is is like how, you know, what effect is this going to have on programming and the use of spaces? Because you can start getting an understanding on, uh, you know, what daylight, what areas of daylighting are going to be good and what aren't going to be good. And maybe you might have some classrooms to this orientation or not. You might know a lot of this stuff intuitively, but data is always good. I'm a believer in kind of what's measurable is manageable. And, you know, being able to see that data and justify those design decisions is is really key. And then into the more, you know, deep diving detail um, that, you know, the likes of Ruben and SOM have been, um, um, you know, uh, um, they're working on a lot uh, around CD and, you know, really kind of late stage 
detailed properties of your glass, your framing, your spandrel panels, and you know different boundary conditions according to the NFRC standards. Pulling reports with quantified, um, uh, you know, uh, proper uh, quantified areas of different types of glazing or different materials and the different properties around that, you know. So just to look at a few kind of key features and a few things um, on Finestra Pro. Let's take geometry, first of all. So we said we look at the geometry and we look at the materiality. So let's look at a few geometry things. So first of all, Finestra Pro, this is a really early stage conceptual mass, but it can drive at optimizing your wall to window ratio. Whether that's defined by code, say for example, ASHRAE 90.1 is applying 40% glazing. And you can see here that Finestra Pro just bangs it on 40% on all facades equally. And then we start getting an understanding of heat gains to the south, to the north, to the east, to the west, daylight performance within your spaces, uh, the, the, the average OR values or average thermal performance of your envelope and different components or different envelopes within that, em uh, or different elements within that el envelope. And do they comply with the, the standards outlined under ASHRAE or IUCC or Title 24 or whatever that might be? Um, shading solutions, just really, again, very early conceptual mass. We've applied like, you know, whatever, 40% glazing on this southwestern facade, but we have quite high heat gains. So just really simply, we select a horizontal canopy and we use a slider to drag it and, you know, increase the depth, decrease the depth or whatever. And you can see the impact, the reduction in heat gains to a more manageable uh, level um, as an average throughout the year. Now we're looking at annual averages here. We can drill in further and look at you know month by month or or peaks and troughs, etc. You know, and again, the the sacrifice you might be or the the you know the upside of reducing your solar heat gains, you may be sacrificing natural daylight because you have a deep canopy over your window penetration. You might be reducing your um, sky angle, and you know it, it's about understanding those. Uh, those gives and gets, I suppose. Shading still, in a more detailed model, we're quantifying this shading. We have a curtain walls with deep set window penetrations, or you know, we might have louvered devices or fins or whatever that might be. We want to be able to quantify how much shading uh, happens throughout the year. So you see here that we can see facade five is shaded on average 28% of the year. It may be shaded more in July with that high summer sun and less in January with the low winter sun. And you can drill in and see those, you know, uh, uh, again, see those different months or those different hours of different days or whatever. Um, you can, you, you got the data here, but you can also quantify it. Um, or I, I mean, you got the data quantified, but you can also visualize it through this kind of, um, um, you know, um, uh, visualizer, I suppose. We can also do that for, surrounding buildings and the urban environment to understand, you know, what impact I'm going to have on the front facade based on these two tall towers at each end of the block. I can start applying geometry based on performance requirements. So, um, you know, I have a target percentage glazing and I have a known window penetration size. I can apply that. I can preview it. I can change it. I can change parameters. I can space them out differently. And then when I'm happy with it, I can create those windows and, you know, just apply them to the Revit model as Revit window families. I can do the same with curtain walls, um, you know, but I can maybe apply them based on performance. So rather than a size, I could say I want a target heat gain internally. I don't want my heat gains to go over X watts per square meter or BTUs per square foot. So Finestra Pro will appropriate the right size of curtain wall and apply it with, you know, the grids and setting out as required. Um, so, you know, that's a, a few things around the geometry, but then we want to talk about materials and materiality. Well, we want to do the same thing, optimizing your spec based on a performance. So we have a known, again, a known heat gain within a space that we want to achieve and a known daylight performance. Finestra Pro will filter down all of the glass types that you can use uh, or that will get you those values. Um, you can reach out to Guardian Glass or Vitro Glass or whoever that might be. But crucially, you can import the, those properties and apply them to your Revit model. So those that solar heat gain coefficient, that light transmittance, that new value, they will all apply to that Revit window family. And then we'll see the, the, the impact of that on the overall performance of the building. 
um, we can start looking at uh, more detailed thermal performance um, of, of different envelope components. Sorry, this looks a little bit, little bit, for, little bit fuzzy, but um, hopefully, hopefully you get the, the gist of it. But we might have a custom panel that we have different components within it. Uh, you know, a, a glass panel, a spandrel. We have frame and bullion, etc. You know, and we may want to cycle through those things apply different properties to them. Are they solid panels? Are they glass panels? What type of glazing am I using? What type of edge of panel factors am I going to apply, et cetera, et cetera. So you can build up a very detailed, you know, overall U value, overall thermal performance of that panel, therefore getting an overall thermal performance of your assembly and therefore your facade. So, you know, much more detailed and much more, um, 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 uh, you know, uh, um, co uh, coherent, I suppose. Um, exporting things for ComCheck, exporting data for ComCheck or reports or whatever, we can just very simply hit a button and export a an Excel sheet with all the envelope um, elements, I suppose, uh, you know, detailed and quantified. So every roof type, the area of that roof, the ore value of that roof, all the different walls. The, the, the penetrations within those walls, the area of those penetrations, the, you know, the, the properties of the glazing, et cetera, et cetera. So, it, so you have a quite a, you know, a detailed but yet summarized list of uh, things to put into your ComCheck envelope tab in a really sort of quick and streamlined manner. Um, Reporting and analytics at any point as well, we can, you know, just pull all of the data from that model. And, it, you know, uh, we have like lots of information, lots of charts and stuff like that. But you can also create your own charts and create your own report. So uh, I want to say I just want to look at one facade. I want the quantities of that facade and I want the performances of that facade. I can do that or I can say, you know, do a report on just performance values. I could do a report on just quantities, you know. So lots of things around that. And then more recently, we've started supporting Rhino and SketchUp and other BIM authoring tools as well as Revit. So, you know, obviously Rhino, not the same as Revit insofar as it doesn't have that component-based, uh, um, you know, setup of, of your model. So you will need in Finestra Pro to assign what's roof, what is roof, what is floor, what is window penetrations, and what is wall. And then from there, we can get that same level of, um, of analysis and, you know, design uh, guidance, I suppose, around your facade and your envelope. Um, one thing that has, uh, you know, caused problems and it will always cause problems with Revit, I think, is uh, the energy model and, you know, uh, good practice modeling, um, you know, within, within your model. So we've put a piece into our workflow that will identify issues around the Revit energy model uh, that will relate to the envelope and therefore to fin Finestra Pro. So if you have a big gap in your facade and it doesn't, you know, the corners don't meet, or if you have no roof, or if you have, you know, your your internal spaces aren't set up correctly, Finestra Pro will identify those warnings and give guidance around how to fix them. So not just good for Finestra Pro, but good for energy modeling and, you know, good practice Revit modeling, um, you know, more generally. And it's a good good sort of value add uh, around that, you know. So uh, not really going to do a sample workflow. So I'm going to just jump into Revit and, and just kind of uh, give um, a, uh, you know, just a quick run through because I, I don't know how I'm doing for time here. Uh, I think I'm doing okay. But I'll spend a few minutes just... Um, uh, just kind of going through this before, um, you know, passing over to Ruben to give some of his uh, his uh, thoughts and experiences. So, um, you know, again, we saw this model a couple of times as we were walking through that presentation. So detailed enough, not super detailed, um, you know, but we do have, um, we do have um, you know, envelope components and we do have a good level of detail in it. Uh, Finestra Pro at its base level, I suppose, is a dashboard. Um, showing percentage glazing for the entire building, thermal performance for the entire building, average heat gains for the entire building, and average daylight, design daylight factor. It's not spatial daylight autonomy. So there's other tools, obviously, that will do that in more detail. But, you know, Finestra Pro needs something lightweight and quick to calculate because it's very dynamic. As I change the geometry, you'll see these values change very quickly. So this is for the whole building on average. But then as I select uh, different facades or different, um, 
you know, uh, different stories, my dashboard will update accordingly and the values will change as to will my, um, my charts. So our charts kind of, um, you know, pull out from the side, giving us, um, you know, wall to window rate. I'll just go back to the entire building, first of all, uh, giving us wall to window ratio, uh, giving us solar loads, um, giving us daylight performance and shading device, uh, shading effects, you know, so you can see facade number nine is shaded 64% of the year. And then, you know, again, we can jump in and get a, a like further uh, detail around that, you know. Um, I can also drop this out and start seeing further information around my building. So first of all, my performance levels, um, these haven't really been started uh, being populated yet, but I may be looking at ASHRAE 90.1 um, and the effects of that um, and are my different el envelope elements um, uh, compliant or not. And if they are compliant, we'll see them in black. And if they're non-compliant, we'll see them in red. You know, um, I've sh I just showed how we uh, can start selecting um, facades by clicking the Revit model, which is the easy way to do it, I suppose. But we can also, um, you know, uh, uh, click it from a tree, I suppose. You know, so we have facade one through whatever, 13. Um, these are just randomly numbers given by Revit. Um, but we can rename those at any stage and we can view where that, you know, those surfaces lie within that, uh, within this Revit model, you know, so we can select them quite effectively, you know. When we do select them, um, uh, I'll select this one here. Um, they will start giving us, info, as I said, the, the, um, the, the, uh, the values will update, but we can start seeing some detail around that facade. So there's my different curtain wall uh, surfaces according to each story. And again, I can rename these surface names uh, and facade names. But within each story, then I can see all of the different um, uh, panels. You know, there's a lot of glazing here, obviously. Um, there's no solid panels in this, uh, on this piece. Um, but let's just choose, for example, which is this one, uh, you know, and we'll see all the different glass types and we'll see all the different solid panels accordingly, you know. So this gives us the ability then to, uh, you know, open the properties in Revit, start changing some information, changing some detail or um, changing the glass type. And as I kind of touched on, we can start setting some values, um, you know, for those in th those spaces and for those uh uh, different surfaces that we can say, I want my heat gain to be X or Y, and you know, I want my, my daylight um, to be whatever I need it to be. And you can see my my list of glass types will filter here as I'm kind of cycling through this. You know, I can then just choose one of those very quickly and apply it to my model. So that SunGuard SNX, whatever it is, can apply to all that that um, the glass within that. Uh, a really nice thing here that I'm just going to touch on real quick uh, that we've just added um, that we can open the say the Guardian Glass Analytics or Vitro um, Glass uh, um, um, you know um, uh, what do you call it a compiler I can't think of the name but uh, you know that they, they you can effectively effectively go into their cost you know create a custom um, sorry I should have logged it into this beforehand but you can effectively uh, create custom glazing and download it and bring it into Finestra, bring it into Revit via Finestra Pro. So for example, I can, you know, do this, uh, create a default makeup. I can change whatever air, glass types, put on film, whatever I need to do. Um, and then from there, what I can do is I can export that to Finestra Pro through our platform. Uh, so I'm going to export that. What happens here is it goes to my glass database in my glass platform and it's just pulled in here as a default makeup zero one uh, when i refresh this here then and i'm not sure it's gonna be go straight away but I, I look when i open it up next or when i refresh it it will come in as one of these there you see i've done two earlier finesta pro glass and simon's example makeup and then they can you know be applied to your revit model so gives a good level of um uh, um you know, uh, customization, I suppose, around your glass as well. Um, I'm going to just um, jump into a much earlier stage, um, uh, conceptual mass um, and open Finestra Pro and just talk about some notional glazing before I shoot over to Ruben there, uh, just real quick. Um, because obviously this is, you know, we maybe started from late stage and we're going backwards. Um, 
but we want to look at a, a conceptual mass and then maybe some of the uh, the um, you know impacts of the shading in this urban environment or we want to um, you know start applying some notional glass based on ASHRAE 90.1 or whatever that might look like you know so I've chosen a really simple conceptual mass and I'm you know you might have different workflows that you might use Rhino or you might use SketchUp or whatever that might be but this is a really simple test box you know test cell or whatever that might take 10 minutes to create you know um from here i can start getting an, as i said getting an understanding of shading and you know i, I think there's a, a short animation here that like i can see the shading effects of all those different buildings on my facade and as i said those effects are going to be quantified in my charts and i can see you know the percentage so i can sort of back that up or i can as i said uh, take an image of this viewer at any stage and you know um, whatever uh, uh, you know setup i want that to be you know um so uh just very quickly i can start uh, changing some thermal uh, outline thermal performances of different facade or different elements and see what effect that will have on my wall to window you know my max wall to window ratio so i see obviously the you know the better the the better the thermal performance of my glazing the more glazing i can have and i can apply that up to max you know 37 percent that will apply to my building and you can see there that it's just been dropped on um you know notionally and i can start then getting an understanding of heat gains and daylighting within those spaces uh from my charts uh but i think we said and you guys will know this better than me, but like ASHRAE 90.1 may have a max wall to window ratio of 40%. So we can apply that, uh, apply that, you know, 40%, and that will update, and that's going to change that 37.2% to 40%. And, you know, as I said, we can start getting a, an understanding of, you know, not huge heat gains um, to, different, to different orientations. You know, all right, daylighting, we're going to get, you know, have some shading on different orientations, et cetera, et cetera. But again, I can drill in and sort of say, okay, on this particular facade, I want to change that 40% and I want to do like 60%. Now, our, our wall to window ratio is still going to be 40% in total. It's just going to be more on this facade. So we can start, you know, drill in and get a better, um, you know, for whatever reason, we might have a curtain wall, or we might have a key, you know, streetscape or whatever. Um, but we may need to start managing the heat gains then. So I want to say, let's put a horizontal canopy. And you can see there as I, you know, drag this out, that canopy is just dragging and, you know, um, applying onto the, applying onto the mass. And I can, you know, recalculate that and see how that affects the, uh, the, the heat gains and I've no idea how, how it is going to affect it, you know, pretty, you know, pretty dramatically there by the looks of things, but like, I'm still looking at the whole facade. So what if I said, well, actually on the first floor, I'm going to have a uh, retail unit and a restaurant. Um, so I'm going to pick those two facades um, or those two surfaces. And I could say just for those two, I'm going to change the wall to window ratio to be 80%. Now, and I'm going to change um, my shading to be much deeper because it's covered seating or whatever, you know. So there's a level of granularity that I can drill in further and further and further, and um, you know, uh, you know. Then let's look at the the overall facade, and you know, we can st we can start seeing the impacts of, you know, our really early stage notional uh, notional decisions. Um, what I never did, and I'm going to just do real quick is I never talked about uh, reporting. So I'm going to actually, you can export, you can just pull this straight from your Revit model, but e you know, it's a little bit easier just to, for me to, just to jump into it here. There's all the reports that I've created in recent times. I can go into one particularly, and here's all the detail, you know, from that particular model, um, all the quantities, all the performances and all the materials that are being used, you know, um, but like I said, there's a bit of a data dump. There's a lot going on there. So I can customize that report and create my own report. So I want to say I want a report that's just facade five. I want all the quantities and areas that I want just the heat gains. And then I can do that and that will drop in as, you know, uh, a chart or a graph or, you know, whatever, whatever I want. Um, 
and a table of values as well. And then I can pull them out into CSV or into Excel or whatever I need to do. Um, so I've kind of gone on a little bit. I hope I'm not leaving you, Ruben, uh, with uh, not enough time to go through what you wanted to go through. Um, uh, are you still there, first of all? Yes, yes, yes. That I think it's fine. We have uh, enough time to go quickly. How is the experience with the SOM with engagement? So I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, great. Thanks, Ruben. Sorry, I, I hope I didn't um, leave you leave you short on time there. Uh, still, what we have 25 minutes, so uh, so I think we have enough time to this go time. through your slides yeah, and maybe have to do a bit of Q and A. Mm -hmm. Let me see. I so hope just you to set a bit of context, my, my yeah, we can. And just to set a bit of context, as you're just getting set up there, I will just be, I, as I hand over, say, we, we, we first started working with uh, SOM in New York, uh, maybe nearly two years ago. And two, two years, the guys, yes. Two years, is it? Yeah, the guys were, were um, you know, liked what we were doing around that envelope design stuff, around some of the stuff I talked about the geometry, but also the materiality and the specification. And, uh, you know, Ruben particularly has been great, really has, you know, got his teeth in, into this. And with Ruben and with some of his colleagues there, we've, you know, developed Finestra Pro further and and really taken it, you know, taken a lot of feedback. And, and as I said at the start, they've been really great, you know, really great collaborators, really great partners. And it's been a, a really interesting uh, experience with them. Yeah, I think that is. Uh, thank you for for this uh, great feedback. Uh, I think same here. Interesting, I would say, um, intersection of platforms of uh, the way we actually navigated these problems in the daily. I would say of practice. Uh, uh, we have been actually uh, looking into Fernestro Pro as a more like a consultant. I would say a software developer to kind. Of give us information tools to give us improvement over the way we look into this performance value so in that sense we starting with projects uh, some confidential projects some some more public as uh, this one this is emory in atlanta we have been looking into kind of from the beginning of the machines uh, how is the uh, as a time and uh, describe in the presentations how we kind of uh, starting to attack these performance values is, is, is especially when we are kind of very high into kind of putting your eyes into uh, the challenge and uh, all of the sustainability challenge that we have uh, in all of the projects how what kind of tools they are are there in order to help into through the to navigate this process so we're testing workflow into kind of creating this uh seamless between massings and designs and the way we practice uh we is this a back and forth we get information from when we de further develop the designs in the uh, as as it is right as a traditional prefaces and do through a schematic design or the design development and to the massings and this is how i've been uh amazing uh i will say way to convoy this process into uh data i will say sorted so uh, we in a swap different projects different challenges they have different platforms to kind of connect dots in speaking of the analysis so we use a lot of the simulations and genes like uh radiance or sims or or uh interfaces as a ladybug honeybee diva and we also explore interfaces analysis with uh design Explorer, or we the optimizations with the Grasshopper, right? That's and also embedded with into the Windows and the lighting kind of analysis with the with Therm and Windows. So that's just like a practice for enclosures, especially in their teams that kind of they to kind of evaluate that. So we and also have a within all of this process, uh, we have a certain amount of output solutions that we would like to kind of use in particular is a um, um, uh, person of the, 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 of the design. What happened is a time, right? So you do usually have a, a, a project that they are very fit into the very short uh, time frame for studies these kind of uh, elements in the enclosures. So we always kind of be curious and, and revit this toward to that direction to collect or, or sorted out the data in a more fancy way. So we found that, that uh, Fenestra Pro with its plugins in Autodesk it gave us a important, or I would say preliminary insight about what is the performance overall in the buildings, but also 
therm and also the behavior of uh, high performance enclosures, we want to kind of reduce the amount of energy that is like uh, the made from the building, as uh, Simon read at the beginning. Uh, we're putting attention about the details. The details are very important and not just about how we produce details in the office, but also how we change this information with uh, we have we engage projects very very in the high level with uh, very uh, cotton walls constructors in in the United States and overall. I mean, uh, and, and in the world, so we have a high high requirement of high performance. So how we analyze this data, uh, how we collect them, it has been a very interesting kind of inter intersections collaboration collaboration. Them, uh, we creating a tool about based upon our needs in different in particular projects about how we collecting data from NFRC's kind of requirement from hundreds or two hundreds and those courting wall panels for example in this particular project uh, we developed uh, interesting tools about to mimic what happened with the, the NFRC the schemes we can select it from the framing edge or uh, panels uh, performance how we kind of uh, sort out these information this data and how we track in those data into the overall performance within the the, the spe specifications right so every project Project is starting with performance applications, so we want to kind of accomplish our target. So that's it's great into the machine exercise and understanding the sub box as a tool for for a step of designing. And then how we selecting the glasses I mean, also has been an interesting tool to kind of navigate it with constructors and manufacturers. And options here and there and how we want we want to kind of address the what everything else in every single office is now very worried about uh how, how is the window or ratio related with the solar heat gain and also the the amount of light that you have inside not just about comfort but also lead uh, certificated uh, it's to kind of you need to kind of re require some percentage of uh, daylight in into the side of the, the spaces so i think that is a great uh, kind of uh, uh, uh i would say um um tool to kind of uh summarize in a high level uh, the different phases that we usually as design needs to kind of achieve with but um, but also that is interesting and also platform that kind of connecting dots from different uh, simulations from all that i will want to emphasize that is very important because if it is a tool that is embedded in revit everyone's used revit right nowadays and you can get out of these preliminary massings or your enclosures uh, preliminary curtain world designs uh big data as it is right now uh i think fenestra gives you uh the possibility to, to make you your life easier is speaking you know, with others uh industry i would say uh partners in the project so I think that uh, this is my kind of my my take on take on uh, I would say considerations here, but yeah, we uh, in this particularly <clears throat> approach with the panelizations of glazing, I would say tool that the we develop. Fernestra was a very uh, process to helping us to okay, you need this, we can work with you in that, and we're still working on these tools nowadays. So it's it's great. It's a fabulous team like to having in 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 the in the process to to evaluate it how our high performance design is is going to be the addresses so now no more to add here but i want to just kind of end up with uh, this image because i think this is great to kind of summarize the steps that we will usually take into 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 uh, the process of design yeah it's a nice image all right in terms of uh you know, almost explaining or visually demonstrating the steps and, you know, that a building goes through so from that really early conceptual shoebox through to some like early energy analysis through to something more detailed through to, you know, actually detailed construction documentation, you know. This is very important and that kind of uh, in the in the regular practice offices, we need to understand the steps, how much information we want to expect from every each steps. So it's good to have a, again um, 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 as as a designer 
mindset. Think about what is your first performance model look like, and then just starting from that, not then another way around. So that's uh, uh, the interface of uh, Fenestra gives you the possibility to explore different window world radios. It's very hard to do manually, and and also with uh, with scripts in grasshoppers that are doing through uh, Ladybug Honeybee, which is great. And also, I don't want to kind of here create a confused message, but and also I think like uh, uh, in the regular practice, when the people is know has this knowledge of this scripting or uh, using grasshopper in that level, uh, that is very kind of intuitive tools and explore performance based upon the baseline. So another interesting uh, data from that process is about the energy guide you accomplished to and how good or bad are you with that. That's going to give to you a little bit of the perspective about where you are going to be in the 2030 challenge. It's asking for us because we want to kind of get it in a in single project when we started. We want to, we, we, we usually start with high, high, high requirements of savings. Mm. In speaking of energy, so that's a good kind of conversation. It's not just about we kind of modeling and we this is the way to go. It's more like a, establish a, a tool or, or I will say a communication tool to embed this challenge with others, industry, uh, uh, manufacturers, uh, energy models, uh, uh, consultants, uh, energy consultants or mechanical consultants. That's kind of great to kind of get it engaged then in that preliminary discussions. I think that's, that's yeah, that's and the, I think from our, from our, from yeah, and from our point of view as well. Obviously, like we, we see Finestra Pro as a design tool. It's part of your Revit workflow, and it's a part of the modeling workflow. Um, you know, obviously, there's much more complex. Um, energy modeling tools out there and you you know you mentioned um honeybee and diva and stuff like that and superb tools and there's lots of like really you know high high end computational tools as such you know and we're not by any means trying to replace those or or you know but as you said there's a you know some of these other um deeper diving energy modeling tools can be quite complex and quite can be quite specialized and can be quite uh you know, difficult to engage with for, you know, ge general designers, um, you know, day to day. And what we wanted was something that was a little bit more intuitive as part of that workflow and didn't require, you know, super specialisms. Okay, there's some training and there's some setting up and stuff like that. But it's not, you know, we always wanted to try and keep it uh, usable and, and um, you know, a bit more intuitive, you know. That's, that's, this is very important and also architectural practice as a designer. I think it's very important to educate the intuitions over the process. I think that's like the right tools to kind of give to you as a designer to understand it. It's not just about to understand the sound path. It's about understanding others. Uh, I will say yeah. very complex the thermodynamics, the kind of criteria out there that the people is, or consultants are expert on this process, uh, how you narrow it down into the um, high level and you just kind of consider about what this matter about your performance, but also your piece, right? What I think the class selections that you have and your, in your tool is great to, to give to you and also product recommendations for the glass. That's just great yeah. as well. Do you, to, I, do, do you mind if I ask, like, do, do you guys have in your workflow, do you have like a typical, um, you know, a typical workflow whereby every project at each stage has to have these decisions made or not, or it do, is it more like project by project, the decisions are made as they need to be made? We have, uh, we are starting to, I think a few years ago, um, um, back at the time when the 2030 challenge is starting to be in, into more into in practice, we, as a, <clears throat> All of the office, office-wise, uh, in different countries, we are starting to embed uh, manuals of guidelines, HPD yeah. guidelines with high-performance okay. designs. We are starting to track in the all of the project data around the world. It is published; it's actually public uh, kind of data. And the tracking where what is the status of the new project and what is the target that we have to kind of uh, achieve with. So the, I, I will say this part of the specs 
and design intent into the guidelines, the guidelines that we have embedded into the process, uh, register uh, some uh, targets that we have to accomplish in every. And that something is uh, is communicate with the clients in different, I would say, ways, contractual and also um, uh, um, through the consultants, energy consultants, that we kind of we want yeah. to kind of get this challenge, or we want to push for that. So. So of course, every project has different challenges and has clients. But uh, again, as a, uh, a general uh, note, is something that is already established. Uh, and uh, like, as a firm, do you find that there is a lot of clients are pushing a lot, uh, you know, with regards to performance and you know energy performance of the of the building and of the facade, or is that something that you know, comes from Skidmore owns a Merrill. Uh, you, you do, do you know what I mean? It, like, is 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 it, is it yeah. client driven or is it like compliance driven? It's a little bit of uh, again our conversation depend on the clients. Some we have a public clients, we have more private clients. Though, so they yeah. are some different. I will say perspective about the energy, but it seems like a, there is a trend in kind of I would, I would say. Uh, overall perspective from uh, all of the size of the project, I would say not just for the regulations, but also for the client, the, the, the city walls for the, the outcome of the project as a social uh, uh, um, architectural uh, object into the, the new sense of the climate change. I think they are more and more, more educated into the, hey, uh, you know, you guys are putting attention about how much re projected energy reduce we are going to have in the PUIs and things like that. Not just from the client, but also from our owners, representatives that are putting high standards in some projects. So I have been working in projects that we have a very high, high standards coming from the project, from the from the client. And I, I have been working in other projects that we have to push in somehow uh, to the clients and also to the consultants and the and the, and the energy modeling phase, like, uh, hey, let's do the right thing here. Uh, let's try to kind of get the, the 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 philosophy of this climate change into on board from day one. Good to hear. Yeah, good to hear. Um, Lisa, uh, any other questions there? Or... Uh, no, we can continue on with the presentation. And did we get to the second poll question yet, or is that still upcoming? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I I, uh, I have that on screen. Uh, if I can share my, or do I? I'll just push oh, it out uh, there. Actually, uh, yeah, if you could push it out. Sorry, I don't have it just <laughs> hand. Sorry. I'll... Oh, no worries at all. No worries. And I'm going to leave that up there. This should be in the slides section of your widget. So go ahead and click that if it's not popping up for you. And while we're waiting for some answers here, Simon, are we nearing the end of the presentation? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, we, we've, uh, we, uh, I think we, we we went through some interesting stuff there, and uh, you know, both from the really early stage conceptual, you know, just looking at notional decisions to you know some quite in depth decision making that Ruben was talking about, and and you know, in their experience in, in Skidmore. So um, yeah, I think that covered covered a lot today. All right, wonderful, and it looks like. Uh, the question was, what two broad design parameters do we use to optimize the facade, geometry, materiality, or both? The answer is both. Congratulations, everyone. Uh, before I close out, Simon, is there anything else you'd like to say? Not at all. Um, I, I, that's, that's everything for me. I'd just like to thank Ruben again um, uh, for, for his contribution today, and I'd like to thank you guys at Applied Software for uh, um, being uh, supportive as always. And uh, thanks, thanks for your time and thanks for setting it up, Alyssa. Yeah, and thank you to everyone for joining us today. At the end of this webinar, a test should pop up. Go ahead and take that and the thank you 
uh, at the end of it should give you the code to self-report to AIA if that is needed. But let me know if you have any questions. You can reach me at achartier at asti.com. That's A-C-H-A-R-T-I-E-R at asti.com. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Ruben. And thank you to everyone for joining us. Thank you so much for, for today. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Alyssa. Um, have a good day. Everyone have a good day. All right. Bye. Bye.